So where are you going to take them? Yes, sir. They're waiting in the body now. Now they're going to rush the report. Have a good morning. Right. Now to tonight's main story. Earlier today, 23-year-old Nancy Tiger Eaton, a great-great-granddaughter of Timothy Eaton, founder of the department store empire, died in her midtown apartment of multiple stab wounds. An arrest has been made, but the identity of the suspect has yet to be released. And in City Hall, you said no... These cuts. Six in my head, four in my back, two in my right hand, nine in my chest. Twenty-one in total. Some cuts hurt more than others. Girls are made of stronger stuff than you think. I was dying three, maybe four hours, and I kept thinking, what if my mother finds me like this? Mother and I had nicknames for each other. I was Tiger, and she was Snubby. As soon as I woke up, I called her. And while I made tea and she had breakfast, we would talk like girlfriends. Every morning, punctually. On the dot of 8 o'clock. It's after 9, Tiger. You didn't take him out and he kept you up all night again. Good morning. It's a beautiful day today. Who's speaking? If you looked outside, it's a beautiful day today. Who is this? Tiger? When I didn't return her calls, my mother knew something's wrong. Tiger, are you here? mother's body just let go because her mind couldn't contain what was happening. my friend, my childhood friend, and relation Hughes. Come on, pass the ball. Give it to me. Our families had neighboring cottages on the Skokas, the playground of the Canadian rich. But for me and Andrew, it was a magical place, a candy-colored world we made just for ourselves. I was in Eaton. And for every Canadian, Eaton is a household name. My great-great-grandfather founded a department store empire and later launched a sales catalog that was so popular it was sometimes the only book in the house other than the Bible. We are practically royalty, the merchant aristocracy of Canada. Andrew is part of another Canadian dynasty, the Oslers. Ernest and Sarah, Andrew's teenaged parents, almost aborted him, but bailed at the last minute. 
When Andrew did arrive, it was with the umbilical cord tied around his neck. What do you think you'd like to be when you grow up, Andrew? A cop. Partially deaf, and I hated wearing my hearing aids. They hurt. But my school for the handicapped was unthinkable for an Eaton, so I was bounced from one school to another. I think I counted 17. The other kids would laugh and make fun of me, so I learned very early in life to swallow my tears. I worked really hard to appear normal, listening and concentrating to the point of exhaustion. You feel something, Daddy? to tell your parents how bad it feels inside. Tiger. I promise everything's gonna be all right. I'm gonna take care of you. I love you. When my parents split up, my mother had a card engraved at Burke's that she sent out to all her friends. Mrs. Edward Eaton is delighted to announce that she's no longer Mrs. Edward Eaton. Everyone told her she was crazy, but she didn't care about the money or the Eaton name. Better to be nouveau poor than nouveau riche, she'd say. She had second thoughts later on, but at the time, that really impressed me. Officially, my mother had no income. Unofficially, she had a very rich mother, Grandma Gossage. We call her Grandma Bossage, but not to her face. I hear you made quite a splash for the Governor General at the opening of Massey College last week. Not according to Zena Cherry. She referred to you in front of everyone at the BNR as Vincent Massey's mistress. I wouldn't be anybody's mistress for a million dollars. I'll get the million. I have two on deposit at the National Trust. Well, I'll do what I can for you, Snubby. Although you really need a lot more money than I can give you right now. Still, your family. Andrew, dinner's ready. Andrew was a zombie in the early morning after waking, a machine that hadn't been turned on. There were mysterious cycles of aggressive behavior. It would be angelic, a model son for months at a time, and then, without warning, the dam would burst. son's violent actions are a cry for help. I guess problems are rooted at home. 
We're doing our best. I love my son. I love my husband. I love my job. I hate my life. Andrew, what do you have to say about all this? There's always this kind of solace whenever we try to discuss his behavior. Look up when you're being spoken to. Don't be critical, Ernest. I'm just trying We're to help, Sarah. To stop. Andrew, don't you want to say something? There's a lump in my throat. I don't want to say anything to hurt my parents. Don't worry, Andrew. You're not going to hurt them. That's why we're here, is to get things in the open. But my dad and I, we don't do anything together. No ball games. Nothing. Me and him never talk. Don't know how to. But you have two parents, Andrew. Not really. I don't know what to do with you anymore, Andrew. Nothing works. You're 13 years old for crying out loud. Put these in the washer and wait for work. And I like bad boys. It seemed to be like a thing with me. In the summer, I didn't mind hanging out with a kid. Andrew was my little brother. He needed me. And I needed to be needed. Hey, Andrew. Hey, this afternoon. You? Last week. I'm spending some time with my dad. How did you hear? Hear what? Um, there's black bears up here with you. Somebody got eaten. Shut up! No way! Yeah. My dad told me. Right on. I want to meet one. Yeah, right, Andrew. You're such a wolf. No, I'm serious. I take my dad's gun and I bust its fat ass. Then I take my hunting knife and I cut it right down the middle. And make myself a bitchin' winter coat. <laughs> yeah, right. You're such a chicken. Hey! No, you're only 13. Give me a beer, for Christ's sake. Give me the beer. No. Give me the beer. Mm -mm. Give me the beer. No. Give me the beer! Oh, no, God, you're just like a delinquent little brother, you know that? You know, I don't want to be your little brother. You have to learn to love me. Of course. Cross your heart? <laughs> cross your heart? Ow! I cross my heart. We swam and sailed and did everything together. How was I to know that the boy I became so attached to is going to end my life four years later? They're 95 years old. They're in the divorce court. The judge says, you've been at each other's throats for how long? 75 years. 75 years! Why do you wait so long to call it quits? And you know what they said? They said, um, well, we wanted to wait until the kids died. <laughs> you get it? Wait until the kids died to get it? Reggie, I got it the first time. Oh, yeah. Ah. Uh, did I tell that one before? About six times. Oh. oh. Excuse me. I have to go to the toilet. I hate it when he says that toilet. It's so middle class. 
Oh, he turned him off and ready to run. He wants me to marry him. That's the point of that stupid joke he keeps telling. But he knows you aren't crazy about it. You're not going to, are you? I don't know. I might. Someday. You can do way better, Mom. At my age? Sure. I think that you should get a nip and attack a younger tiger. He might hear you. Then what if he does? He's not good enough for you. He'll do fine. He's decent and he loves me. He's older than Dad, for God's sake, and he's still trying to look like Burt Reynolds. Well, I'm only going to need someone to talk to. <laughs> Besides, you're not going to be around forever. You can have a bow of your own one day. You kidding? No, I'm going to stay here and be an old maid with you for the rest of my life. <laughs> <laughs> well? Did I miss anything? No. What are you doing, Dad? Just an attention on this bill. Can I help? No, I'm fine, Andrew. You'll just get the letter. No, I won't, Dad. I can help. I promise I won't get in the way. Okay. All right. I'll let you hop behind the wheel. When I tell you, give it a little bit of gas, but only when I tell you to. Okay. Okay, slowly now. Give it a bit of gas. A bit more. Okay. A little more. Okay, that's good. Just give me a tiny bit more. And I said, give me a little bit more. What the hell are you doing? My dad, I didn't mean to. You nearly amputated my hand. Sorry. Sorry. You know what? Thanks for the help, Andrew. I thought we could manage it from here. Who's outside right now? Helping him with the car. Can you believe it? I know. It's terrific. Oh, he's even starting to get along well with his father, I know. going for his bronze today. He's really excited. Now I can be a lifesaver, he says. You can go do it now. Hey, good luck, honey. Oh, hang on. A Andrew, your Aunt Amy wants to wish you well in your swim test. Andrew! Sorry, Amy, he just sailed my past and I didn't even hear what I'm saying. Why do you have to do this to me, Dad? It wasn't my fault. I don't know. Hang on, Amy. I didn't do anything. All I want to be is your son, Dad. That's all I want to be. Andrew. It wasn't my fault. Okay? It was an accident. It wasn't my fault. What is going on out here, Andrew? It wasn't my fault. And I'm exploding now. Pow, 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 pow. And I'm not stupid, Dad. Okay? No, of course you're not stupid. No, 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 stupid. Please, Give me a little bit more gas, Angie. You stupid moron. Cut your hand off. A little bit more. Bam! Break your legs. I said a little bit more. You wouldn't have sucked it. Bam! Smash out his face against the grocery store. Get out of here, Angie. Worried about what Andrew might do next, his parents sought help from three different mental hospitals in Ontario. Then his parents took him to a renowned and expensive psychiatric facility in the States, desperately hoping someone there could tell them what was wrong with their son. Andrew has a deep-seated canker in his personality. Essentially, he has no conscience. I don't understand. What, what do you mean he has no conscience? Let me put it this way, then. 
Your son has all the characteristics of a psychopath. A psychopath? <laughs> we produced a psychopath? I'm most concerned about the possibility that his behavior might escalate in such a way that he does serious harm to himself or others. This is not a case of teenage hormones, as you may have hoped. Your son's behavioral problems will not disappear by themselves. And I strongly recommend that you leave him here with us for observation and treatment. For how long? I honestly don't know. Ten years, maybe longer. You're, you're telling us that you want to lock up our son until 1992. Well, and then what? What's supposed to happen? Is he, is he going to come out cured? There is no guarantee. But in my opinion, it is your only hope. It's my little bro. Not so little anymore. <laughs> yeah, look at those shoulders. You got no shoulders. You got nothing in life, baby. Helling you out for whole summer. This was the last summer Andrew and I spent together. We had a ritual. Every morning he'd row across the channel to our place. He'd make tea in the kitchen and bring it up to me in bed. I was gonna save Andrew that summer. I wanted so much to be the one to save him. Hey, Nancy. What? I had an EGG last week. You had an AGG. Like an egg. Yeah, yeah. It's as if you have an egghead. You've got egg inside your head. <laughs> it's called an EEG, an electroencephalogram. Yeah. Imagine the electricity in your brain. Yeah, yeah, whatever. They didn't find any. And uh, I'm on this new medication, right, to keep me from bouncing off the walls. And... God, that was so completely nuts to someone like you. What is supposed to mean, someone like me? You don't know me. I do, since I was like two or something well, yeah but you don't really know me i mean you didn't know that i had a nervous breakdown when i was 12 did you shut up i mean they didn't have to lock me up in the loony bin or anything but i was on pills for like three years and felt oh. like a zombie <laughs> that's crazy yeah you know so i know what it's like Andrew. and if you want to talk to me i'm a really good listener no 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 don't worry about it <laughs> Oh, come on. Where's my specialty? Come here. I'm a total loser. I hate who I am. Yeah, I just can't wait to grow up. My problems will be over. <laughs> you know the feeling. I used to hate being stuck up here. It bored the hell out of me. I really enjoyed it this year. Yeah, it's the best summer I've ever had. I've just been feeling like, you know, my life's not going anywhere. Like I'm missing everything by inches. Sounds like me. I gotta keep taking control, you know. Taking care of this or get a real job, my own place, and maybe a real boyfriend, you know. Let some jerk off. Someone will love me the way I love him. Yeah, I'm a real relationship. Something solid, you know? We're not going to lose each other, will we? What are you talking about? I just wish now could be always. I wish I could die right now. That way we'll be linked together. Drive around a constellation like those stars. We are linked together.
When I was 21, I finally went to deaf school. I learned how to sign and became an expert lip reader. Oh, good. Winter. Good. Cold. Just how it looks. Warm. Warm. That's right. Rain. Right? Good. I got a job selling real estate, and I was good at it. Everyone was surprised, especially me. I never really thought I could do anything. Anything I'd get paid for, anyway. And finally, I was a girl with her own apartment. Things were really looking up. For the first time in my life, I had a feeling of self-worth, something I'd never really had before. Well, I guess I could have been more picky, but... You know, two months in Midtown is pretty damn good, and I think it's got possibilities, don't you? I certainly do. We're gonna make it really nice. I think I'm gonna like it. Good. Oh, God, it's gonna be so quiet without you around. Promise you we'll call every night when you go to bed and every morning when you wake up. I promise. Finish up the bed. What's that? I don't know. my dad. What does he want? Oh my god, he bought me a car. Oh my god, look, my license plate. I can't believe that. That's very really nice. Andrew stole my new car before I even had a chance to break it in. He took it up north to the family cottage when his parents went on vacation without him again. Andrew's latest escapade landed him in court. He was given 300 hours of community service and sent to yet another mental hospital for assessment. But those experts might just as well have consulted Andrew's horoscope to find out what was wrong with him. When he lashes out like this, he's in a, what we call a dissociative state. It's like he's watching it on TV and his brain is cut off from all reason and restraint. His brain is very high functioning. He knows exactly what he's doing during these violent outbursts. The antisocial personality fits him like a glove. He lies, steals, threatens people at gunpoint. But when you talk to him, he's like the kid next door. Andrew's problems stem from a mental illness, not a personality disorder. And with the right antipsychotic medication, he could be released tomorrow without risk to the public. Medication won't work. If we don't put him away for a very long time, we're going to read about him in the paper someday. I don't believe he's a harmful boy. Put him in group therapy. We'll talk him back into being good. I got sick and tired of her telling me that Friday the 13th was an unlucky day, so I took a knife and I stabbed her in the face. Then I went to the movies. That's all I want to say about it. Sweet, but I don't buy it. It's total boat. He's lying. He's never stabbed anyone. Anne Marie, don't challenge Andrew. I was a force up to baby. Me too. I've been breathing for two and a half minutes. I didn't cry for five. I take bells. I get shots up the ass to calm me down. <laughs> you down yet too? <laughs> oh, he's so completely nuts. Not me. They let me out for only two more filled weeks. Seriously? You're going home? Home, but not home. What do you mean? Me and my parents don't want me living under the same roof as them. So what do you do?
We're doing it so busted. <laughs> Nobody, unless we're down here. Nobody saw us leaving. Seriously, come on. We should get back before the lockout. Play a game with me first. You ever play fire? <laughs> Are you like 12 or something? What's fire? Yeah. Basically, you start down here. And just go up and up and up until you find the hot spot. Then you say, I am fire. Need some help? Yeah, I think I left my light on. Do you think you could jump me? Okay, start her up. <laughs> Keep her revving. I think uh, I probably keep it running for a while so the battery doesn't die again. Okay. You know, I can't thank you enough. You rescued me. That's not a problem. I'd be happy to jump you anytime. Baby's gone. She don't know what she's missing. Yeah. Oh, baby's gone. She don't know what she's missing. Know what she is. Since you left that day, I've been getting a lot of sleep. I met a guy. He's absolutely drop dead gorgeous. Kind of face you'd seen in movies. Like, sounds like you've been swept up your feet. I totally have. So what do you know about this gorgeous George? All I need to. His name's Jim. Tiger, what if he has a wife? Two daughters, a parakeet, a home in suburbia. <sighs> Mom, I have some intuition. That's what you said the last time. What are you two doing here? Hello, Andrew. I'd like five minutes alone with my son, please. You really think that's a good idea? I would like five minutes alone with my son. I'll just be over there. You guys are making me nervous. Why'd you come up here? Oh, well, it's, it's difficult to know where to begin, Andrew, except to say that, uh, well, we want to try to make it work as a family. Andrew, what you need is a home with love, and, well, we just haven't worked hard enough at it. It's nobody's fault, you know, I just wanted you guys to love me. Well, we want that, too. You're our son. And we do love you, Andrew, we do. You're the only child we've got, and we want you back home. It's only 20 bucks, for Christ's sake. It's not about the money. I'll pay you back. I don't know how many times I have to tell you, but you're not going out tonight. <laughs> you were out every night this week. Last night, you didn't even come home till 4 in the morning. So I'm too old for this. We don't know what you're doing. We don't know who you're with. You're treating me like a damn two-year-old. I am trying to treat you like an adult, but it's got to be a two-way street, Andrew. You said things would change. You promised everything was going to be different, and now we're back in the same old routine. Shall we? 
You're not in school. You're not working. What are you doing? If you're not careful, you're going to end up selling fake Rolex watches on Young Street outside of Eaton's for the rest of your life. You're always saying things to piss me off! This conversation is over. Give me the money! No. <laughs> Andrew, hi. <laughs> oh, how are you? Good. good. How are you? I'm good. I thought you were getting treatment. I, I was. I'm all better now. Oh, that's great. Hey, yeah. Can you have some drink? Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't that bad up there. I met a girl. That's so cute. Yeah, she's cool. She's kind of crazy, but she's cool. <laughs> Here, that's my phone number. I kind of missed you. I missed you too. There's just something about that summer, you know? You remember the way it was? Um, the way what, what? The way it was. You know, up north. You know. <laughs> Andrew. You don't know I love you, but, uh, I don't feel that way about you. You know that. You know that. I just missed you, that's all. Me too. Look, I, I have to go, so... But it was nice seeing you, okay? Bye. I'll call you. Yeah. I uh, picked the lock. Andrew, did you have anywhere to stay? No, no, my parents kicked me out. <sighs> okay, I'm late for work. So I'll give you a key to my apartment. I'll sleep on the couch for a while. Thanks. Listen, no friends and no drugs, okay? Okay, you won't even know I'm here. Thank you. 
Picture game. Came. The worst things got for Andrew. He dropped out of school and was trying to make his own way. But he was only 16. He couldn't hold down a job and was living hand to mouth on the streets. Oh my god, Jim, you're early. I can't believe it. I was walking by, I saw you light in the window. Are you on anything? Well, I look high. I'm expecting someone. Today's my birthday. <laughs> Today's not your birthday, Andrew. I won't stay long, I promise. <sighs> Sorry. Fine. Fine. But if you're coming in, you're going to be useful. It's a nice tree. Thank you. I've taken me to Chibos and probably will end up at the Barracuda. Are you finished yet? Just about. Don't you think you put enough on already? Let me see. When? So I've got no money and no place to stay. <laughs> well, you better get a job in your own apartment because you can't sleep on my couch forever. Why don't you make things like that with Anne-Marie? Maybe move in with her. Hey, you're still good at this. We'll stop by next week. Hello. Hey, Jim. Yeah. Uh, no, OK. Yeah, sure, I understand. It's just, you know, it's the third time that you've done that to me. Yeah, okay. Sure, bye. Looks like I'm not going anywhere. So can I stay here? Like it with the little rabbits on it? Do you still have it? Andrew, oh my god. 
Sorry, I didn't mean to scare you guys. You couldn't ring the doorbell? Yeah, I know. I should have called first. Well, you just can't just waltz in the house and whenever you feel like that in the morning. Well, if the last chance will probably wait for more. Listen, we're doing all we can to help you. We don't have any money for it. We already deposited your loans. I didn't, I didn't come here for cash. I just... You know, it's a new year, so I was, I was hoping that we could try, you know, at least try to be a family again. I want to come back home. Oh, honey. We're leaving for Mexico tomorrow. Thanks for the warning. Can I at least stay here while you guys are gone? No. Look, you trash this place every time we've left you alone. It's not that we don't want to. We do, honey. It's just... I'm sorry, but what are we supposed to do? Uh, well, listen, if you don't screw up while we're gone, maybe we can talk about it when we get back from Mexico. Okay, when's that? January 21st. January 21st. No problem. Have a nice trip. Thanks, honey. Okay. Maybe a postcard. Okay. I just had this wonderful idea. Why don't you like to do something for me? <laughs> hey? Sure. Why don't you take off your panties? <laughs> Go ahead. Because they have dicks. Who <laughs> <laughs> said that? Me. It sounds like one of your quotes. No, but there are lots of things about men. Like what? All of them, some said mom. You men. Something, something. You're all pigs, filthy, dirty pigs. Mm -mm. All of you, all of you, pigs, pigs, pigs. <laughs> <laughs> A man said that. I think pink is a gay here now. <laughs> no, pink is a... It was gay as a pink hair now. Oh. It was, was gay as a pink hair now. And then there's Conrad. Yes. Men are capable of every wickedness. Oh. How's that? Oh. That's good. Oh, Andrew. Um, no, she's not here, I'm afraid. No, I don't know where she is, dear. Yes, I'll tell her. Well, aren't you nice to call? That boy sounds more unhinged by the minute if you ask me. Yeah, I could always get in this. You know, I don't like it when he stays in your apartment. No, oh, I never do anything to hurt me. You don't know that. And you don't know him. He stole your car. That's not forgivable. <laughs> Remind me not to get on your bad side. I got it. You need to put some distance between you and that kid. I know. I know. I just... I, I, I feel responsible for him. There's no one else he can talk to. And I can't just bad him. him. That's, that's not what I'm saying. Just take him out for coffee. I don't think it's wise that he should stay in your apartment anymore. Huh? Okay. I, I, you're right, okay. I should. I won't. Promise? I promise. What was that? 
I promise. Okay, I Good. promise. Good. I'm glad that's settled. Yeah, oh my too. God! Look at this place. Looks like a Chinese warehouse. <laughs> <laughs> Take the charge of flight. Take him. Say yes. They say yes. Yes. Enter what time is it? feelings you've been having? No. Does anyone in the group have any suggestions? Well, uh, whatever. I'm feeling like I'm gonna, like, jump out of my skin. Uh, I like to play a lot of hockey. Uh, really helps set the steam off. That's a very helpful suggestion. Why not try taking some extra exercise, Andrew? Why not play some hockey, work out your anxiety that way? What are we doing? Babe, we're going to Toronto. I don't think I'm going to do that. Listen, why don't we just pick up it and head straight back up north? I don't know. I mean, my parents are away for a few days. You know, we can have the place to ourselves, take walks along the lake, come back and scroll all night. Yeah. I could get really into that. You? Just as long as we're together. Is it like you just pull over in the middle of the highway? Hug me. Hug me. Hug me. Hug Baby, me. listen, why don't you just put your head on my lap, okay? I'm so happy when we're together like this. Yeah, me too. Your hurry. You can't get out of life alive. That's it, I'm going. Why? Because I gotta check in with my parole officer by six and you know it. So deal with it. I think you want to get the hell out of Toronto. Let's go! Let's go! I hate it when you whine in that pissy voice of yours. That's it. With or without you, I'm gone. So go. For Christ's sakes, I'm not stopping you. You think I give a... Thank you. 
And I'm sick, okay? So let's just meet for coffee in the morning. Can I just please crash on the couch? I'll stay out of your way. Please. are coming home tomorrow. I know, you told me like five times already. Well, that was before I died. Before you died? Yeah, I died, don't you remember? I killed myself. What the hell is that supposed to be? Means I used to think that life was over here and death was over there, but I'm dead already. For real. No me, no I, no nothing. Nobody can see me, nobody can touch me. There's just nothing there. Andrew. 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 What? What the hell are you talking about? Nothing. I was joking. It's a joke. I get it. I get it. Hello? Nancy's not taking any calls tonight. you and take you on a romantic cruise to the island kiss my ass piss off don't ever <laughs> It's a tough place, but it's all gonna work out. Trust me. You just have to hang in there, and all turn out fine. Hello? Tiger, you've been feeling crummy all day. For goodness sake, kick Andrew out and get a good night's sleep. Okay, I will. And if you won't go, you can always spend the night here. Don't be silly, Mom. I'm fine, okay? Everything's fine. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Okay, I love you too. Ten more minutes, just ten more minutes, okay? Look, I can't do this anymore. This is way too rough for me. You know, I really want to help you, but I feel like I have to get up in the morning. I'm going to bed. I was, was hoping to talk. I can't get into you right now. Just talk to me, please. Can you just come out here and talk to me? I don't have time for this, and I don't have time for you right now. Don't go to bed angry. snapped at you. But I got problems too and you never think of that. Are you alright?
tonight. Morning. It's a beautiful day today. Who's speaking? If you looked outside, it's a beautiful day today. Who is this? The relevant issue at the trial was the state of Andrew's mind. Was he mad or bad or both? It's hard. What is Mrs. Leishan Hughes? Raising a child. It's so hard. Have you spoken to your son? In the end, everyone agreed. We find the defendant not guilty by reason of insanity. He will be sent to a mental institution until such time as his illness has been cured. Hi, Andrew. Sorry, Lee. Wait. So, nice couch. Where'd you get it? Evens. I'm laying here. I'm afraid to go to sleep. I know what I'm gonna dream. So what are your dreams about? She's so pretty. Not she, Andrew. It was me. Save me. You are on your side. You were facing me. Your eyes were closed. And then something happened. What? I'm trying to forget. I'm trying to park it up in my mind. Come on, Andrew. You were at the trial, what did they say? I stabbed you. They said I stabbed you. Where? In the skull. And? And in the head, in the chest. How many times? I don't know. What did the coroner say? 21 times. Launch the knife into you again and again. Blood everywhere. Splattering the walls. 
my face, my hands. Why are you doing this to me? I don't know why. Do I scream? Do I try to defend myself? Yes. But? You slept to the floor. What do I look like, Andrew? Am I still pretty? Your hair. Just closer your hair on the bed. Your face. It was like someone smeared it with pain. I want to wipe it off, but I can't. I throw a sheet over it. Am I dead yet? So warm and I hug you. And I kiss you. And you don't try to stop me. You don't try to stop me. You let me. You let me. You let me kiss you. It's like I've always wanted to. Oh God, Nancy. I'm so sorry. No. No, I'm so sorry. No one's ever loved me. No one has ever loved me. No one's ever loved me. No one has ever loved me. I'm sorry. that I'm dead, are you? I mean, he told me to kick him out, but I didn't. I just... I just couldn't. Let's not even talk about that. Oh, Tiger. Tiger? Are you all right there? I do had wanted to put you in the Eaton Mausoleum. But I really put my foot down. I let him choose the coffin, though. He always loved boats, so I thought he'd pick a good one. Well, do you know who I ran into the other day? Christy. Remember how flat she was? She had smaller boobs than you. Well, my dear, not anymore. Oh, and listen to this. Cynthia's getting a divorce.